good to have all of you here. There's plenty of seats down front. <laughs> plenty of good seats, as they say, down front. I'm glad you're all here today. I was going to, uh, well, we'll just do it. Uh, for those of you who are guests, my name is Craig Goma. I'm the pastor here. Glad to have you here. I encourage you to sign our guest register in the back. Remind us that you are here. And if there's anything we can do for you, please don't hesitate to see me after the service or drop a note in the offering plate. Taking a quick look at our church calendar. Of course, today is the first Sunday in Lent, and I'm working on the uh, sermon series, What Makes a Hero? Uh, and so I'm hoping that as we go through each week, uh, you will find uh, different ways to be heroic in faith. Uh, also this week, please note uh, the Lenten Wonderful Wednesdays. This Wednesday, 6 p.m., we'll have a small meal, and then we'll join together in the study of Adam, Adam Hamilton's book, 24 Hours That Changed the World. The books are back there. They're $10 each. If you'd rather not pick up a book, that's okay. We're using the DVD component for this, so it will be helpful if you have the book, but you don't necessarily need it. But I find people like to have the book, so uh, we're doing that. Um, next Sunday our noisy offering which benefits the backpack program so please don't forget your change remind people that are not here to bring their change so that we can collect all of that money during the second hymn for the backpack program uh, and you'll see the other announcements uh, listed there are there others that we need to put forward today <laughs> Uh, you'll notice that the um, Lily insert is in your bulletin. We are on very limited time this year. We have only in through next week to take orders, and um, the crop has been severely uh, affected. So we are limited in how many lilies we can order this year. So we've also order offered white lilies to offset, uh, no, white tulips, white tulips to offset the lilies. Announcements. Yes, the lady with the microphone walking back up the aisle. We will be doing Welsh cookies this Friday. The order sheet is in the back. If anybody would like some, just put your name in. How many? Okay. Before we hear the prelude, I think with all the events of this week, I felt it extremely important to start our service in prayer. Uh, regarding that, so uh, rather than um, preach on it, which I've done more times than I can count in ministry after a tragedy like that, um, I think it's important for us to pray uh, about this. So uh, just give me a minute and we'll pray together. Let's join together in prayer. Loving God, Scripture tells us, Blessed be the God who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation we ourselves have been given by you. We hear from the psalmist, Cast your burden on the Lord and God will sustain you. Jesus told us that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. These words that Jesus spoke about the thief came true once more this week, Lord, as we heard and saw the images out of Parkland, Florida. Another school shooting, another trauma our children should not have to experience at school or anywhere. We know that since the beginning of the year there have been so many of these incidents Lord, forgive us that we have not been able to come up with a way to change the culture so our children can be safe at school. Give us the courage to speak truth to power so that that thief cannot do this again to our children. 
Help us embrace the abundant life you offer that we might change and transform the culture around us with your love and keep children from ever going through this again. God of us all, we thank you for Christ's grace through which we pray to you in this dark time. Lives that were loved have been torn from this world. Expectations of the years ahead for them that once held promise now are gone. The mystery of death has stricken us, O oh God. You know the lives we live and the deaths we die. Woven so strangely of purpose and of chance, of reason and of the irrational, of strength and of frailty, of happiness and of pain. Into your hands we commend the souls of Elena Petty, Meadow Pollock, Helena Ramsey, Alex Schachter, Carmen Shentrup, Aaron Feiss, Jamie Gutenberg, Chris Hickson, Luke Hoyer, Peter Wang, Alyssa Aldehef, Scott Bagel, Martin Duque, Nicholas Dwaret, Kara Lofran, Gina Motalto, and Joaquin Oliver. None of these human lives you have made is without eternal meaning, O oh Lord. No earthly fate is beyond your redeeming. Through your grace that can do far more than we can even think or imagine, fulfill in their names your purpose that reaches beyond time and death. Lead them from strength to strength and fit them for love and service in your kingdom. Into your hands also we commit our lives. You alone, God, make us to dwell in safety. Whom finally have we on earth or in heaven but you. Help us to know the measure of our days and how frail we are. Help us in your keeping. Forgive us our sins. Save our minds from despair and our hearts from fear. Guard and guide us with your peace. Amen. Let's now focus our hearts and minds on worshiping God by listening to our prayer. Good morning. Please, please rise for the call to worship. I'm sorry, I don't have much of a voice this morning. I yelled too much in pasties yesterday. <laughs> People of the covenant, God does not remember us according to our sins and transgressions. God remembers us according to our steadfast love. The God of our salvation teaches us right paths and leads us to truth. Please join us for our first hymn, Lord, who throughout these 40 days.
Please join me for the opening prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God of mercy, I begin this Lenten season in confession. I do not live according to your ways, but according to my own. I condone violence, participate in systems of injustice, and use power of my own advantage at the expense of others. Forgive me, I pray. I am tempted to fall as other than those you set before me. Teach me of your commandments. Help me to turn from evil in as many guises, and turn me toward your kingdom drawing near. And command of love, remember me, pray, and for me once more and always. Mark of safety in your life. Rise in my pray. Amen. Hear these words of assurance and pardon. Hear the good news. As Noah and his family were brought safely through the flood onto dry ground, so in baptismal waters we are brought from death into new life in Christ. Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of God, forgives us and reconciles us all and all things in heaven and on earth. Thanks be to God for this good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory be to God. Amen. seated. Join me for the prayer of illumination. Gracious God, in rushing waters and in dry wilderness, in every season and circumstance, we need your sustaining word. By the power of your Holy Spirit, proclaim the good news among us today, that we may repent and believe and see anew how the time is fulfilled and the kingdom has come near. In Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. I'm reading the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The fornication and all impurity and covetousness must not even be named among you, as is fitting among the saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor silly talk, nor levity, which are not fitting, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Be sure of this, that no fornicator or impure man, or one who is covetous, that is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for it is because of these things that the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not associate with them. For once you were darkness, and now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is a shame even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it is said, Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart, always and for everything giving thanks in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father. This is the word of God.
Let's join together in our next hymn. standing as we hear these words from Matthew. He then called the crowd together and said, Listen and take this to heart. It's not what you swallow that pollutes your life, but what you vomit up. 
Later his disciples came and told him, Did you see how upset the Pharisees were when they heard what you said? Jesus shrugged it off. Every tree that wasn't planted by my Father in heaven will be pulled up by its roots. Forget them. They are blind men leading blind men. When a blind man leads a blind man, they both end up in the ditch. And Peter said, I don't get it. Put it in plain language. Jesus replied, You too? Are you being willfully stupid? Don't you know that anything that is swallowed works its way through intestines and finally defecated? But what comes out of the mouth gets its start in the heart. It's from the heart that we vomit up evil arguments, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, lies, and cussing. That's what pollutes. Eating or not eating certain foods, washing or not washing your hands, that's neither here nor there. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And all of God's children said, Amen. One night a young boy and his parents were headed to the theater. They decided to take the quickest way to get there the fastest, and that was through a dark alley. And there in that dark alley, a thief killed the boy's parents right in front of him. Deeply affected by the murder and the loss of his parents, he began to train himself mentally and physically to be about fighting criminals. He chose the symbol of a bat because he was deathly afraid of bats as a kid, and he wanted to strike that same fear into the criminals he was chasing. Once Batman was born, Bruce Wayne continued to run his father's company during the day and fought crime at night. On this first Sunday in Lent, as we look through the book, What Makes a Hero, we, we begin at the beginning with Batman, a hero we've all grown up with at one point in time or another. I was out at Dallas today, and it was Scout Sunday, and with the 30 kids out there, they all had different experiences of who Batman actually is, and for me, it's always been Adam West. The figures of Bruce Wayne and Batman were created by two writers, Bill Finger and Bob Kane. Back in 1939 was the first appearance of Batman. They created Batman having a genius level intellect, a peak mental and physical fitness, with great detective skills, highly skilled in fighting and martial arts. As we think about Batman and what we remember of Batman, the Cape Crusader has been portrayed by more actors than any other superhero in movie history. Eight to be exact. Now I mentioned Adam West already, but did you know there were two more before Adam West who were Batman? Louis G. Wilson and Robert Lowry. Then of course Adam West played him, and then Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, Christian Bale, and the one I'm still not sure of that just came out, Ben Affleck. He's got to win me over as Batman. He hasn't done it yet. An interesting fact about Batman, also known as Bruce Wayne, is that in most cases, Batman refuses to use guns to fight crime, mainly because that's the way his parents were killed. And he had an extreme dislike of guns. From 1939 on, Batman has overcome adversity to become a, a pop culture hero who continues to fight crime and inspire us today. Heroes lie at the center of our stories of good versus evil. Whether it's the latest Batman movie or the latest hero movie, anybody know what it is? The Black Panther. Latest hero movie. Breaking box office records. We've also remember our favorite cartoon heroes. But we are drawn to the struggle of good versus evil. As someone who's seen all of the Star Wars movies, except the last one, I still have yet to see that. I mean, who doesn't root for the rebels, right? Especially in the Empire Strikes Back, knowing that the Jedi would come back and there would be a happy ending, right? I mean, why does it feel right when the cowboy in the white hat foils the plot of the mustached villain? 
The struggle between good and evil is so fundamental to our understanding of the world around us and across cultures. We share a common story of good and evil, but they're told in different ways. The heroes of our stories represent us. They are men and women who help us understand what good is. And they fight for what is right. So the question for us today is, what is good? Our heroes always have a solid understanding of good. And sometimes they have an easier way to tell the difference between good and evil than we do. There's a scene with Batman ready to take his arch nemesis, the Joker, into custody one more time. And he hears the shouts of a little girl crying for help trapped in the building below him. Guess which choice he makes. Choosing to save the little girl, the Joker gets away one more time to be caught in a later day. Clearly, Batman, also known as Bruce Wayne, knows the difference between good and evil. It's in his DNA. It's instinctive to him. But what is good? There are good things all around us, right? Children playing, people helping people, people sacrificing for the greater good. I remember the we've talked about the South Wilkesboro Residents Association offering a place to learn and impact their community. Our church offering food to kids at Ed Start once a month. Our mission project did jointly with Dallas Church for Heifer International to have people around the world lift themselves up out of poverty. We see good in the world. We're doing good in the world. We know there's evil out there. We know there's forces that fight against us. Batman knew that too. Mr. Freeze, the Joker, Penguin. But we have biblical examples as well. King David early on was seen like an angel of God, discerning good versus evil. Yet near the end of his life, his vision became cloudy and dim, and his son Solomon usurped the throne. I mean, if King David had trouble discerning good from evil, what hope is there for us that we have any shot of knowing the difference? Too often we think goodness is what feels good. But goodness goes beyond a nice feeling or something pleasant. It goes beyond what tastes good or something that's effective. Too often we judge goodness by the results it produces. We judge the tree by the fruit it produces, so the tree has to be good, right? The work we do doesn't make us good or bad. The works we do in our life don't gain or lose us salvation. The work we produce is a sign. It's a sign of our connectedness to God. It's not about the fruit or the tree, but it's about the one who created both the tree and you and I. Good is simply our word, our definition of how we see God's activity in the world. Every time God created something, God called it good. At the end of every day when you read the creation story, God called it good. Creation isn't good because it's beautiful or orderly. It's good because it came from God. So if that's what good is, what's evil? Sometimes you hear people say the good, the bad, and the ugly all come from God. But that's not the gospel. That's not biblical. Not everything comes from God. Trials and stumbling, despair, violence are not God's way of testing our faith. Things happen. They are not planted by God. Jesus said every tree that my Father has not planted will be uprooted, which means accidents happen. Not everything happens for a reason. I read a story about a young man who grew up in the Bronx with his mom and dad and his five siblings. Life was not easy for them. His mom struggling to find work, his dad on drugs, his mom finally decided to take the kids on a trip to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where she had family, and they traveled there quite a bit. This young man who had asthma knew it was worse when he was living with the family in the Bronx, but it seemed to get a lot better when they were in Bethlehem with family. 
You don't have to worry about the mean streets of the Bronx in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. His mom find out very quickly about this young man's asthma and how much better it was living in Bethlehem. With her husband struggling with drugs, she gave him a choice. Move with me and the kids to Bethlehem or stay. It's your choice. Her husband chose to move with the family, got his life cleaned up, got a job in Bethlehem, as did his wife. And soon the kids found their place. In fact, this young man found his niche, not just in academics. He was a great student, but also in sports. And it started by playing running back in Pop Warner football. He got so good at it, he boasted to his dad one day, if I score 15 touchdowns this year, you're going to give me $100. He was at number 14, and then 15 came, the best of the year, a 99-yard run for a touchdown, and there was his father at the goal line, ready to give him $100. As the saying goes, the rest is history. For Saquon Barkley, who is a standout Penn State running back. The bad times that led the Barclays family moving for, were not from God, but through God's grace. The family, including Saquon, were transformed by their circumstances. When bad things happen, we need to look with a faithful eye so that we might see and taste that the Lord is good. Evil is a void. It's nothingness. Just as good represents what God does, evil is represented by that void. Heroes can sometimes tell immediately the difference between good and evil because they are repelled by the nothingness. People tell me all the time about watching the History Channel and the World War II things, and I said, you know, I can't do that because every time I hear Adolf Hitler's voice, I get a chill that goes down my spine. I sense the evil and the nothingness. And I'm disturbed by it. Evil is the shadow trying to block out that holy light from God. Think about creation again. God first created light and separated the darkness out of it. God didn't create them together. In the season of Lent, we hear the word sin a lot. Why? Because we need reminders that sin isn't about what we do, but what we do that separates us from God and each other. The recent Me Too movement and the Time's Up movement have shed light on the sin of sexual abuse and harassment of not just women, but men. Men and women were created by God as good. When we use each other for our own pleasure and objectify each other, we are sinning, moving ourselves away from God and away from each other. The more we sin, the more we find ourselves in that nothingness, that, that void. We often call Jesus the light of the world. The Gospel of John in chapter 1 says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Later, when Jesus meets Nicodemus, when does he meet Nicodemus? At night, in the darkness. But he shares these words. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love the darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light. No matter how dark it may seem to us, because Christ shines in that darkness, we can find our ways back to God and to our neighbors and friends. Jesus is clearly redefining how we identify good and evil. And how does he do that? Through discipleship. And discipleship is not easy. Jesus asks a lot of us who call him Lord and Savior. It means making sacrifices and difficult decisions along with feeling joy and knowing hope. You know, some would say Jesus isn't very successful. I mean, he only had 12 followers and was crucified after only three years in ministry. 
But we're here today because the resurrection revealed that death is not the end of the story. Jesus is always with us. It's not that good wins in the end, but in the end, Christ is there. God is the source of our goodness. It's not that God does good things, rather it's what God does is good. There's good and there's God together. A God who will stop at nothing to continually be with us. Heroes are asked to do more than recognize goodness, and so are we. Batman shared goodness by roaming the streets of Gotham City and helping people. We're called to, maybe not to roam the streets, but certainly to share goodness wherever we go. We're to shine that light. Have you ever asked yourself if you're doing the right thing? God has already shared what is good and right for us to do. Micah tells us to do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with God. To do justice means taking a look at the bigger picture. Why are people hungry? How can education be more effective? How can we stop school shootings? Second, we must offer kindness and mercy. Offer a meal to someone. Listen to someone who's struggling. Seek, seek out the sick and visit them. Mercy and kindness is feeding that person. Justice is asking the why question. And lastly, we're called to walk humbly with God. Peter spoke to the crowd and said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven. In other words, humble yourself. Seek forgiveness. Turn back to God. That's what repent means. Turn back. Fall in love with God again. Do this, and God's promises are yours. There's a woman by the name of Dorothy Day. She's a hero to many as a key worker in the Catholic worker movement during the Great Depression. She was best known for her work on the Catholic Worker, that's a publication that lifted up stories of those who were abused in factories. She fought for child labor laws. She maintained pacifism just as World War II was beginning. She was a woman of deep faith and pointed out evil not just in the world, but in the church, as the church was amassing huge amounts of wealth. Her superpowers were justice and kindness and walking humbly with God. And they should be our superpowers too. But like the young Bruce Wayne, we too need to practice and build up our skills to be able to change the culture and the world and the community around us. Batman is not what Gotham wanted. Batman was what Gotham needed. Jesus is not the hero people want. We know that just from reading scripture. People wanted him to be a military leader, a hero, to bring Israel back to prominence. But he turned out not to be the hero they wanted. But he is the hero we need. He's the one who shines the light on our darkness so we can find the path back to God. He's the one who calls us to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with him. So what would justice look like in our neighborhood? What's the big picture? What's the why question that we need to ask? How can we then fall in love with God again in kindness and to do good? What are the ways you need to begin walking with God every day? Batman was not what Gotham wanted, but what Gotham needed. Jesus is not what people want, but Jesus is what people need. How are we as individuals and as the body of Christ in this community called to share the hero of Jesus? What did it look like? 
How can it change things? How can we shine the light in the darkness around us to let people know about Jesus Christ? Amen. As God calls his children to come together to pray, we're called upon to pray for one another. Other joys or concerns we need to share today. Anyone? If did I see one? Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and most merciful God, through the gift of water, you have saved us. You've saved us from oppression, from sin, and from death. And we, the ones you have chosen to be your own children, now come before you in praise and thanksgiving, offering our songs to your name. You have established a covenant with us, giving your word that we would not be destroyed. But yet we continue to say and do things to sin by word and deed, to go further into the darkness, farther away from you, farther away from each other. You call us not to be foolish, or as Paul says, to be unwise. But we continue to trust our own understanding. Loving God, show your mercy upon us. Shine your light that we might come out of the darkness and come together to join in the life of abundance that you call us to. You've called us to speak your word, to have that word fall on our ears, to go into our heart and share that. So by the power of your Holy Spirit, give us a fresh wind of the Spirit that from our heart we may speak truly of the new covenant and of the one who is our hero that we need desperately and the world needs and our community needs. Jesus Christ. As we come to worship you today, we are confronted with just how fragile life is. We know and care for many this day who are confronted with their own mortality. There are some who face death because of disease. Others who are feeling alone because they are troubled in their minds. Still more are made alien because of their sin. And they feel sick in their soul. Deliver and restore them. Hear our prayers today for Ashley and Mike, for Melody, for baby Grayson, for Kathy, for Tom and Pat, for Kathy and Caitlin, for the Hartman family, for those who are suffering addictions of all types, for their family and friends trying to help them turn around, to turn back and live life abundantly. We lift up our EMS and our fire, our police, those who work in the hospital and those who answer the calls at 911, the people who serve us each and every day without question, without wavering. We hear of another earthquake in Mexico and a helicopter crash as they were surveying the area be with those affected in both the crash and the earthquake. It wasn't long ago they suffered a devastating one. So they're still continuing to clean up. Be with the families. Be with the loved ones. Be with the rescue workers. We know there's still trouble in Syria and North Korea. And Lord, we've seen some disturbing images once again in Florida. saying now is prayers and thoughts are not enough. Action is required. 
giving us the courage to do just that. Let the young people we see in the videos at the rally against gun violence serve as our heroes to give us that courage to fight against those kinds of violent acts, to do our best to keep our children safe in school. And lastly, we pray for our military and their families wherever they may be serving. Hear us in the name of him who died and rose again, who is the light, who shines in the darkness, who gives us the opportunity to live in a new way. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art As God has offered us so many gifts, it's then we offer some of them back to the church, so the church may be a gift and a blessing to others. Join together in our prayer of dedication. God of steadfast love and faithfulness, we are humbled as we try to do what is right and to walk in your ways. Receive, we ask, these offerings and use them for your own good purposes in the church and in all creation. We pray in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's join together in our final hymn.
we go forth today, our battle of good versus evil is a little bit different than Batman's. He always kind of wins in the end. But that doesn't always happen with us. We know what is good, and that's what comes from God. We know what's evil, that's the void, the nothingness. And there are a lot of people in that nothingness that don't know a direction and how to get out. But we're called to shine the light of Christ, the good light, in our community, in our lives, all around us, so that people will know that there is hope. And that there is a way to live a life that's abundant in joy and hope. And I remember as a kid watching the TV show uh, Batman with Adam West. And they'd say, what will happen to Batman next? What is this? What is that? Will he get out of this? And of course we all knew he would next week. But we'd hold our breath till the following week. But they'd always say, watch next bat, next week. Next bat time, same bat channel. And... We come here every week, same time, same channel, but there's a difference. We're called to be disciples and to go out and share. Share the goodness that God made. Point to it. Let it shine so that the community can know what possibilities are out there. Go now in the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.